Dan and you're welcome to another week on Live at Three. Well, Mr. Davis is on a week off. So we're delighted to welcome back Radio One's morning man, John Creedon. Thank you, Thelma. Good to be back. And in turn, let me welcome our studio audience from Mullinahone, County Tipperary. <laughs> You'd know they were GAA fans with, with voices like that. Yeah. Would you believe five weeks to Christmas? And in our craft spot today, Aidan Hayden, Aideen Hayden has a Christmas idea or two to show us. I was feeling fine until you mentioned Christmas, but <laughs> anyway, we'll have music and hints from Anna Dwyer with Ida Flynn at the piano, plus a song from the Wexford tenor Peter O'Leary. All of this and a look at the weather prospects as soon as we've caught up with the latest news of the day from Eileen Dunn. Good afternoon. Thank you, Eileen. Well, our weather poison today is Evelyn Cusack. Hello, Evelyn. Hi, John. Nice to see you again. And to see you again, too. Um, it's not as mild today as it has been of late. No, years. it's very cold. In fact, this time last week, we had record-breaking temperatures, temperatures up to 19 degrees in the Dublin area, record-breaking over much of the country. Very far from that now at the moment, 7 or 8 degrees, a good 10 degrees below. And really, for the next couple of days, for Tuesday, Wednesday, and perhaps Thursday, very cold, very wintry, mm. and very frosty. So, a big change. There was a touch of frost about our right this morning. Yes, and it's going to be even worse now over the next couple of nights, mm. and there's a chance of icy roads around, especially around Mullinahone, I think. Around Mullinahone in particular. <laughs> well, I have to put that on the map. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also noticed that the, um, the, the air conditions seem to be much better since the introduction of the new anti smog laws. Um, well, it's difficult to judge, really, because we haven't had the calm anticyclonic conditions that give us these, like we had uh -huh. this time last year and the year before. So, so um, the proper breeze isn't going to blow it away. Yes, it? exactly. You don't get the air lodging. So, I don't know. It's hard right. to judge. At the, we've had, we have different weather conditions. So, what's on the cards, then? Chevron. Well, you. Helma is on the far side of the studio. Let's go and see what she's up to. Well, I'll tell you, if there's snow threatening and, and miserable weather for the next few days, I can guarantee you that our audience who are with us today from Mullinahone will be glued to live at three because they're great fans. Isn't that right? right. <laughs> you have to say that. The very first lady I want to meet is the secretary of the Knocknagow Social Club. Why is it called Knocknagow Social Club when it's actually... The Mullinahone area. Knocknagow, Kikim's book. Oh, Kikim. Of course. Kikim, Knocknagow. So that's why. So you, that's why. It's, a, it's in memory of him, if you like. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, you, there's a great GAA tradition in that area, too. There is. There and is you, indeed. your social club actually get together in the GAA, in the GAA pavilion. pavilion. Yeah. We, um, every other week, is it? Every other week. Every alternate Tuesdays. We had no club, Thelma, for the older people of the parish. And um, the public health nurse felt that there should be. Mm. And we got together, we, there was a committee elected, and uh, from there, we took off from there. Now, what do you get up to? Uh, how do we get up to? We meet on alternate Tuesdays, as I said, and we have bingo, we have cards, we have the cup of tea. And, and I, a little bird told me that there's often something stronger than the tea. <laughs> on state <laughs> occasions, <laughs> tell me. On state <laughs> occasions. <laughs> on state <laughs> occasions. <laughs> and then we have, uh, we've had a few outings during the year. We went to a few shows. And Great. we I had our summer outing down, in, down to uh, Mount Melbury. We went right. down to Mount Melbury. That would all depend on funds, too. And that would depend on funds. Yes. And funds are a little problem, you know. Well, the community council helped us in the beginning. Yes. They were generous to us. The credit union helped us. Good. The ladies club helped us. And um, we've been promised funds mm -hmm. from the health board. They haven't come, mind you. But, <laughs> but you're not shy to will. get out there and ask. No. No. No, we're not, really. Well, I know that uh, you, you, your members are far from, from uh, departing from this life because many of them <laughs> get out on the bicycle and, and cycle. Oh, that's true, into the yeah. meetings. And for the so people there's plenty who of don't life left to the old dog yet. We have uh, drivers. We have voluntary drivers. The, I must and say they're great they, to they us. They deserve now. a great credit, they, actually. Yeah. They're, are, there are a couple of them who aren't here today, and the, the rest of us are here. Mm -hmm. Well, you're happy enough with the premises that the GAA give you, or are you actually looking for your own premises? We're not really, Thelma, but we, if we had finance, we would make it that little bit more comfortable. We'd like to have it a little bit... We'd like the seating and that to be a little bit more comfortable. 
Well, now that you've said it, you see, on national television, you never know you what never know might who start <laughs> rolling in. Hopefully. 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 Well, we'll be uh, rooting for you anyway, Kitty. Thank you Next very much. Next to you is Peg Birmingham. I want to have a little word with you, Peg, because you're actually a blow into the area, all the way from Kilkenny. <laughs> I'm a Kilkenny. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been accepted as one of their own yet? Well, I hope so. Actually, I'll be 35 years there next Friday. Oh, well, she's near. So what do you reckon? Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> now, you so married um, a, a local man, yes, a farmer, uh, yeah. and uh, he uh, died 10 years ten ago. 10 years ago, yes. I'm so waited for 10 years. So that left you in a difficult position. What did you actually do about running the farm then? Well, my husband was an invalid for five years before he died, so the children weren't fully educated, so I sold the cows and set the land until their education was completed. So now they're all fending for themselves. So. And did one and son come back to yeah, help you run the farm? Back. Yeah, John is back home. Yeah. And uh, is, it, is it a dairy? Uh, dairy you have now? Yes. Because uh, somebody told me that you were complaining that, uh, well, not surprisingly, that with the quota, you see, it, it, it penalises you if you uh, if you do well. Yes, really. yes, yeah. You're penalised if you over through your quota, so <laughs> we have to keep within it. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about kick and country, because I know uh, you are an expert in that field. Of course, it's Charles Kickham that, yes. that we're talking about. Yes. And, now, he wasn't actually born in the area, but he died in the area. Um, Charles Joseph Kickham is one of Mulnahone's noblest sons. He actually wasn't born in Mulnahone. His mother was an O'Mahony from Cashel, and it was when his mother was on a visit to her parents' home that Charles was born. And uh, he spent most of his life in Mulnahone. He was born in May 1828, and he died in uh, August 1882. And, of course, there were big celebrations, uh, the centenary celebrations in, um, on his death. In yeah, 1982, the centenary. And um, he wrote many books, including uh, The Eagle of Gary No, Sally Kavna, and, of course, Nock Nagao. Nock Nagao, and that's, Nagal. Nagal. that's, that's Nagal. would be uh, the well, social that's, that's that's the name, after. yes. Yeah. Now, he, he is buried in the area. He's buried uh, behind the church in Mondano. For those who, who don't know what he looked like, we actually have a death mask. <laughs> it's better than nothing. <laughs> but <laughs> we have the death mask there of him. And uh, also the, uh, the, the cross that, that marks the spot that he's buried in. Brave, yes. That's behind the church in Mullahone. Now, there was a pageant too. Um, I think, I'm not sure if it was in 82. That particular one there. Yes, the pageant was in 82. Um, celebrating the centenary. The pageant was written and produced by Jim McCauley, a teacher in St. Kieran's College, and uh, we produced it in August 82. And um, as actually some of the people that are in that picture are here today. Ah, in fact, I think we'll be meeting one of them later on too. You will. And we have a, a picture too. I know it's unusual to show a picture of a tree, and you say, "Why are we showing a picture of a tree?" But we have a, a, a little <laughs> slide there. What's significant about that particular tree? That's known as Kickham's tree. It's um, four miles from Mulnahone, and it's said that Kickham sat there and reminisced and ah. wh uh, while he was thinking about writing. Is it's a beautiful, it's actually a magnificent yes, tree. It's really beautiful. And the Kilkenny Archaeological Society put a seat under it. I see that. Yes. That's <laughs> the so uh, the, the, those celebrations, of course, were the major ones in 82, but in there 82. were other celebrations each year. Well, 1982 weekend. was such a success. We thought it would be a pity, really, to let it die. So to keep Kikim's memory alive, we have a weekend, the second weekend in August every year, known as the Kickham Country Weekend. And that comprises of lectures and bus tours and uh, bit of poetry. The poetry reading on the Sunday afternoon. And, and a bit of music too. I believe our own yeah. Sonny Knowles has been down yes, to you. Yes, he has. Mm. It's Sonny. Like, when is that, did you say, in August? The second weekend the of August The second weekend of August. We yes. must remember that now yes. for anyone who'd like to go down so we've had and Sonny join Knowles, in in the uh, celebrations Patterson, there. Sean O'Shea, Terrific. Hal Roach, Terrific. To right peg. A few. I want to have a little word Thank with the lady much. sitting here beside you. Mm -hmm. Stacia Brett, 83 years young. Now, I believe... 
you were driving way back when, when you were only a, a 1926. Slip 1926. Yeah. What sort of a car were you driving in those days? It was an old Ford, you know, that you could let back the hood, you know, and oh, you see? in the summertime. A convertible, no less. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> you could put up side screens in the winter, but you'd freeze it. <laughs> yeah. did, it cost, did it cost the earth to buy? It cost about £120, new. Was that a lot in those days? I'm sure, sure it was, yes. of course. Yeah. <laughs> and what about to As run? I told her, such ladyship, we wouldn't have a bit of water. Mine was an American. He came, was home on holidays and he bought it and left it to us. Like, of course, you know, the big mm. spenders. was not <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Mm. But were you able to afford to run the darn thing? Oh, we were. Well, we managed that all right. <laughs> and, like, it, it, did one have to insure them and tax well, them in those had, days? Of course. Yeah. Well, what they had. Yeah. And yeah. what sort of speed it would it do? Well... Uh, I suppose about 35 or 40 miles was nearly as much as it would do. And what were the roads Actually, like in those days? Oh, God, they were terrible, sure. You'd <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have to be in and out between the stones. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, you're driving to this day, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll be getting a driver's license tomorrow, I think. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're clutching in your hand there a photograph that I know is a rather precious photograph. Yeah. It's... Uh, Dev. That's right. And he, he, let me just show it to our, our viewers. He looked absolutely uh, wonderful there in that photograph. And this is actually signed to you in 1922. And also on the top, he, he signed it again in 1967 because you met him twice That's in right. your own home and then in Oris on Oak That's right. Thank you. And uh, I know that um, your family was very much involved in the troubles. Well, um, well. There were four or five of them in jail both times now, you know, and one, one of my brothers was shot then. Yes, and one of your brothers was actually in Croke Park on Bloody Sunday? He was Sunday. on Bloody Sunday. In fact, to see, went for the priest for Mick Hogan now. Was he on the pitch? Was he playing or was well, he, he was a spectator? Playing, playing near him. Was he? Well, he, was, he was one of yes. the players. And he <coughs> went for the priest, and funny enough, it was Father Discrotty that he got to come to Mick Hogan. He was one of the whole men too. Right, of course... Mick Hogan was shot and killed. Yeah. And they, they then uh, dedicated the, the Hogan, Hogan stand, stand to him. Yeah. But you enjoy your life, there's no doubt about I it. Do, do. I do, do. The car is a lifeline, you say. Oh, God, the car was great. And if it <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you can take a back seat now, as they say, because we're taking a little break for right. all our favourite ladies, um, our favourite lady of music, Anne O'Dwyer. <laughs> 